Thank you for joining my video walkthrough on migrating from an embedded database for your IGEL UMS server to a external SQL database. Uh, what are some reasons you might want to migrate? Common scenarios are moving from pilot into production. Um, maybe your DB admins want you to centralize the database for backup and maintenance, or maybe you're looking at a larger scenario, more resiliency, and you need um, high availability and need an external database for that. Uh, so some resources we're going to use in today's video. These can be found on IGEL eDocs, um, and they are setting up the SQL database and copy in database contents. Uh, URLs are provided. So we're going to log on to our UMS server real quick. Um, just take a look at the fact that we have an embedded database. So we're going to click on data sources here. Under DB type, you can see we're using the embedded and the port 1528 indicate that it's the local Apache Derby database. So we'll flip over to our SQL server and uh, let's take a look at uh, IGEL eDocs real quick. We'll just do a quick search for SQL. Uh, we'll click on the setting up the SQL database link. Same thing you saw in the uh, resources I showed you earlier. You'll just want to copy and take that text out of the yellow there, paste it. Um, Anything that's in brackets, you'll want to update with your information. So database name, SQL user, password. Uh, you'll specify the database name a few times. I already went through and did that to save a little bit of time. So below are all my values. Um, and we'll just copy this text. Uh, you can see login name, uh, a really secure password there. Database name again. You'll create the uh, user IGEL UMS. We'll set up the IGEL UMS schema. And we're going to copy this into a um, query here. So we're just going to launch the uh, SQL Server Management Studio. Connect real quick. We'll just take a look at um, our database and security objects real quick to verify that. Uh, those that we're wanting to use don't already exist. So you can see we've only got the uh, built-in system databases on this SQL box. There's no um, IGEL UMS login at this point. We're just going to paste this into a query and execute it. Uh, commands completed successfully, so if we refresh our database again, we should see RMDB show up. If we look at logins and refresh logins, we should now see our IGEL UMS login. Um, so now if we flick, flip back over to our UMS server, we're going to add a new data source. We're going to specify that it's a SQL server. In my case, the host name is just SQL. Um, we're going to use the username we specified of IGEL UMS the schema we specified of IGEL UMS and the database name is already populated since we use the default. Next thing we're going to do is test the connection. So it's going to pop up with that username we had and we're just going to put in the password we specified when we created the database. Click OK. Login was successful. There's no uh, schema there. That's fine. That's to be expected. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy the data from the embedded database over to the SQL database um, by simply Clicking copy, choosing the target, and then we're going to log into the target database. Same password we specified again. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time to retrieve the data and uh, move all the data to the new database. Um, so I've actually cut a little bit of that time out of here uh, so that we don't just have to sit and watch the status bar. And it's completed successfully. So the next thing we'll want to do is actually activate that database. Um, again, we'll need to log in. Click OK. Uh, you see the checkbox moved. That database is now the active database. And now we're going to launch the UMS console and we'll verify that we can still log in. Um, so since I had set up Active Directory, the 
the AD user account that I had set up as an administrator should still work. Um, obviously, if you were logging in with the local database credential previously, that's no longer going to work in the new database. You would have to use the uh, new user that you specified. And that's it.